Hello, good morning. Welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. My name is Michael Talercio. I'm the pastoral intern of Forest Hill Presbyterian Church, and you're with us for our second look at the book of Hebrews today, going back to chapter 2, or going forward to chapter 2, going back to the book, that is. Um, I got a few of my family members here just kind of hanging out in the office with me today, so if you hear a little noise, they're even closer than usual. Um, but uh, just a kind of a relaxing uh, afternoon for us. Uh, I mean morning, because these are always recorded in the morning. <laughs> Not recorded. Okay. They're always live. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm keeping this, by the way. Um, glad you're with us today as we look at Hebrews chapter 2. Let's, uh, let's open in prayer as soon as my wife finishes laughing. <laughs> Father, thank you that you have given us this opportunity to look at your word. Uh, it's a blessing to, uh, to have access to a God who speaks to us through his word. Thank you, Lord. We pray that today as we look at Hebrews 2 that you would speak to us about your son, who we'll be reading about. Uh, he is the one uh, whom the entirety of the Bible is really about, and uh, he is the image of the invisible God. He is the one who enables us to see you. He upholds, as we saw in chapter 1, the universe by the word of his power. And so we pray that we would see him a little more clearly today, uh, for, for him to get praise and honor and love and uh, respect from from humanity, uh, which is which is his due, uh, and also for us to be more and more transformed to live in light of who he is. We pray this. Amen. All right, chapter 2 of Hebrews. Therefore, we must pay closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. For it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, what is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection in to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children, of, I and the children God has given me. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham, Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. 
Well, yesterday, as we passed the official halfway point in our series, I had mentioned how I myself was hoping to kind of turn a corner and be a bit more brief going forward in my devotions, and then proceeded to release like an 18-minute video about an eight-verse chapter, (laughs) and you're probably thinking, don't hold your breath. Uh, But I am serious. I do want to work on that, and so today I have just two points for us from today's passage, two points from Hebrews 2, and they are as follows, the importance of the message delivered to us and the grace of Jesus in identifying with us. That's what we're going to see, hopefully, from today's passage. First, the importance of the message delivered to us. Um, The passage opens today uh, referring to salvation. Look at that in verse 3 there. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? What's the salvation that this verse here is talking of? Well, it refers back to chapter 1, that Jesus made purification for sins. And by the way, then he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. It's notable, uh, just in passing here, that there was no furniture for a priest, for any priest to sit on in the temple because they were constantly making sacrifices. But when Jesus made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the Father because his work was completely finished. See, salvation has to do with Jesus, the Jesus that we heard of when we looked at chapter 1, this glorious King, this glorious Son of God, the one who upholds the universe, by the word of his power, this Jesus made purification for sins, for sinners. That's salvation. That's the salvation that we hear of, that we read of in verse 3 of today's chapter. And we ought to pay careful attention to it. Because if for nothing else, it was delivered to us declared by angels. Now, much of chapter 1 had to do with angels and how Jesus is superior to angels. Angels are important themselves. If an angel brings a message, you listen. You, You want something to be done, you ask an angel to do it. In fact, angel means messenger. Angels are scary, are scary, Beings. I mean, they're glorious, but they're otherworldly creatures. And when an angel showed up in the Old Testament, those people would fall down in terror. The people of the Old Testament. I'm sure we would too if we saw one. When an angel speaks, you listen. Uh, and, and God would often give his people the grace, as I'm sure he would with us if that, that were to ever happen. Uh, he would give his people the grace to hear the message from the angel. Um, So what's at stake if we neglect this message that was so faithfully declared by the angels throughout the Old Testament and especially with the angels at the beginning of the New Testament? What's at stake if we neglect this message of such a great salvation? Well, we drift away from it. Like a father and son at the beach or the the young son is playing in the ocean and the father's neglecting him on while he's on his phone. And if that's a young child in the shallow end of the water, whew, uh, it's, it's hard to say because it's happened to some people, but the, the waves can sweep up that child and that child can end up in a very dangerous place very quickly. So we don't want to neglect such a great, we don't want to gr- neglect such a great gift in either case, especially when it comes to this great salvation. Drifting is dangerous, and it happens little by little. Now, uh, to our second point, the grace of Jesus in identifying with us. We see that throughout much of this entire chapter, and we see it in particular with how Jesus takes on the form of a human being. You see, angels are kind of greater than human beings in some ways, aren't they? Uh, Just like we said, humans have often been afraid to encounter angels. It's because they're, they're kind of superior to us. And yet Jesus, in his grace, 
he doesn't become an angel to save those fallen angels, what we now generally call demons. He, he doesn't identify as an angel. He identifies as a human being. And he doesn't just identify in the way that our culture tends to use that term, identify, which just means I just say that I'm this thing. Jesus became a human being permanently. Did you realize that, brothers and sisters? Jesus is a man because he became one. The Son of God, who was always God, became a man, and now he will always be both God and man for eternity. God the Son will always also be God the human being. Wow. Wow, that is love. That is identification with someone that doesn't deserve it. Like us. That is commitment. <laughs> and that's what Jesus has done. He didn't come to rescue the angels, though they're greater than us in so many ways. He came to save us, brothers and sisters. Let's thank him for that now and live in light of that today. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you have given us this opportunity to be refreshed by Jesus' love for us. He came, as it says in your word in today's passage, to deliver all of those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Lord, we don't know why you would do this, but we believe your word that this is what you have done. Would you help us to believe it more fully, Lord? Would you help our unbelief? Would you make it impressed upon us in such a deep and profound way that we can't help but be joyous each day that you help the offspring of Abraham? Those who would believe. Not, not every human being is going to be transformed by this word, O oh Lord. But the offspring of Abraham, those who believe in the same God whom Abraham believed in, those are the ones who benefit. May it be us. And may we tell others of this good news. In the same way that the angels declared good news and peace on earth to men in those fields many years ago in Bethlehem, may we declare that same message to those who would submit to the true king, the man, the God-man, Jesus Christ. We pray this in his name for his glory. Amen. Well, I'm glad that you were able to join us today for this hopefully brief uh, little devotional on Hebrews chapter 2. And I hope you'll be able to join us again soon. But if nothing else, that you won't neglect such a great salvation and that you'll live in light of it today. Until next time, God bless you, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm.